first of all, I forgot to say this in my last review, but today marks the 22nd anniversary of Mariah Carey's Butterfly album. It was put out on this day, September 16th, 1997. So, yes, of course he has the hits, My All and Honey and Butterfly and all of the things, darling. So if you guys, you know, uh, know that album and, you know, love that album, you guys tell me in the comment section what are some of your favorite songs from the Butterfly album. Um, some of my favorite songs are Baby Doll, uh, Butterfly, My All, The Beautiful Ones, Outside, and Fourth of July. Just to name a few. But well, pretty much the whole album. That's my favorite Mariah Carey album. Top three favorite Mariah Carey albums. Butterfly... Then after that it would probably be Emancipation to Me, Me 2005. Then after that it would probably be Music Box, um, 1993, I think. Um, so yes, yeah, in that order. But you know, Mariah makes great music and blah blah blah. This is not about Mariah. This is about Married to Medicine. Y'all know I can go on and on about Mariah forever. If y'all don't know, I am definitely a lamb. Have been since 2005. So. Okay, so anyway, let's see, Married to Medicine. Um, it opened up with uh, Heavenly. Uh, we see Alora, Heavenly's one and only daughter, her youngest child. Alora, the grew up child, of oldest child. Beautiful. She's growing up to be a beautiful girl. She's always a beautiful girl, but, you know, she's growing up. And um, they're going to get their nails done. Uh, she's 13, I believe, now. Um, Heavenly... You know, she was just like, now look, now she's a child. She's 13 years old, so give her 13-year-old nails. I screamed. Um, so they went to go get their nails done. And they was having a little conversation. Um, you know, Laura's growing up. She was becoming a teenager. And she wants to spend less and less time with her mom. Heavenly don't want to hear that. She don't give a damn. Um, and Heavenly was just like, um... You know, so what's going on? She was like, are you excited about high school? She was like, yes, I'm excited about high school. And she was like, yes, I'm going to have some independence. And she was just like, what the hell kind of independence you going to have? Talking about, because you're not getting a boyfriend until you're 22. She was like, 22? Are you serious? And Heavenly said that she had a boyfriend at 15. And um, Heavenly also said that she went to the movies with her boyfriend because Alora asked her. Um, Alora was like, so you going to let me go to the uh movies with my boyfriend what if I do Heaven was like I'm gonna beat your ass this is gonna happen it's, it's so funny to see them you know uh, go back and forth okay um, so Contessa she you know she's working on her degree and uh, she's on the way home and so she decides to get um some McDonald's on the way home, child. She get home, it's clothes all over the counter, dishes in the sink, etc. Scott, the husband, he done, um, you know, took over as, you know, the full-time parent while she's away at school or whatever. Um, and he's definitely having some resentment about that, for sure. Um, but I mean, wives support their husbands all the time, so you know, it's interesting how a lot of times once it's reciprocated men can't take it um and so you know it's just like huh, it's very interesting it's not not easy being a, a mother is it so anyway um she comes home and she you know gives them food and he was just like do you really think that you know the kids and i being here all day that we not gonna eat like you should have called and said something um i mean she could have but i didn't think it was that big of a deal i think it was more so upset about the fact that um, she came in bitching and moaning about what's out of place and what's wrong and all this kind of stuff when he has been with the kids all day every day and you know getting on his nerves I'm sure and um, you know so she kind of came in you know all like oh what's wrong with you what's going on here blah 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 and that kind of pissed him off naturally um, so I was just like okay you know they're kind of going through something um, this season for real uh, let me see so, Dr. Jackie and Dr. Heavenly, they met up and, um, you know, they was just talking about the whole thing about um, how Mariah is upset 
with um, Dr. Jackie for repeating what Quad said about her allegedly doing coke um, at the reunion. Um, all Jackie said on the little podcast with Heavenly was, "Do you think that Quad Marat? Do you think that Quad should have repeated that she?" saw or heard Mariah um, doing drugs Mariah took offense to that because I guess she she said it in a way that made it seem like she agreed with Quad um, about the whole statement about Mariah um, when I don't think that Jackie meant it like that I really don't I just think that um, or maybe she did I don't know ja I, I will agree with Mariah in the sense that Jackie is slick with her words and you know Jackie's not going to argue with you she's not going to give you all that but she is she can be very passive aggressive at times people like that can be very passive aggressive and their reads are in their words and you know they're not going to argue and go back and forth with you like that but they're going to do other stuff um but with that said I do think that Mariah is being extra petty in this situation um you need to come at Quad more so than you need to come at uh, Jackie but you know people hold Jackie to a certain standard and yada to the yada um so you know they also talked about Simone versus Heavenly and their whole beef that they got going on um Jackie got emotional she was just like you know what I just really want my friend I just really want my friends back we were a sisterhood etc etc it was just like I know you know, if y'all don't know what happened, what basically happened was um, last season, Heavenly and Mariah got into it like they always do. And um, they was at Heavenly's house with the crab boy. And Mariah told Heavenly to pressure wash her outside uh, balcony deck moment. Um, to pressure wash, she said it was nasty as hell. You're going to give us cross-contamination. And then um, Cecil, like, um, was teasing Heavenly about it on Twitter and actually added her. And then Heavenly shot back and said, why don't you get a job instead of being in women's business? Heavenly got a bad habit of doing that. That this is women's business, this is men's business. This is what women should do and say. This is what men should do and say. I don't necessarily like that, that logic all the time. I understand where she be coming from, but I don't really like how she um, thinks because Heavenly just gives me the type that, you know, she she's so traditional in that way that God forbid if, if one of her kids was non-traditional, let's say that one of her kids was gay, um, she would have an issue with that. She would have a huge issue with that, you know, because of, of her values and how she thinks that this is what a man should do, this is what a woman should do. This is how this one should behave. This is how that one should behave. And that is just not... It's not practical anymore. Like, it's not... Um, it's, it's outdated. You know, it's just like... Just just let people be people. Um, should, Cecil have, should Cecil have tweeted that comment and rubbed it in? And uh, No, he couldn't have... He shouldn't have did that. Especially adding Heavenly. Like, how did you think Heavenly was going to react to that? But Heavenly was wrong as well because Heavenly also in her tweet back to Cecil, she said he needed to get a job and all this other kind of stuff. She revealed personal things that Simone said to her as her friend, you know, because Simone expressed to Heavenly that she was upset and irritated that Cecil, you know, didn't have a job at the time and all the bills, etc., was on her. So Heavenly used that as a dig. But you know, the whole pressure washer thing was a dig to her, so she did a dig back. People in their forties and fifties, y'all, I tell you. Um so yeah, you know, Jackie she wants to have an emergent emergent tea um event where all the ladies sit around with tea. They have a mediator there. She has the homegirl there. Who was giving me Chrisette Michelle vibes for some reason. I think it's her voice. That her voice sounds a lot like Chrisette Michelle. But um says she wants to have that event and you know, there you go. I'll try to get the girls back together. Um there was a scene with Toya. We unfortunately found out that Toya had a miscarriage. She was six or seven weeks pregnant. I'm so sorry, Toya. Um and she went to go see Doctor Simone. You know, you know, they were very excited about it. They want a little girl. 
Um, and it ended up not happening, and you know, very sad. Um, so yeah. Um, speaking of Toya, Toya's confessional looks are gorgeous. As far as the confessional look, Toya with that blue shirt on and the jet black hair, just simple. Toya looks gorgeous. Toya is giving the best confessional look. Toya. Uh, let me see who else. I think Simone looks good in her confessionals. And I think that um, Mariah looks good in her confessionals. Jackie looks good too. You know, Jackie, you know, Jackie looks cute. Quad. That blonde monstrosity. And the short little bob cut is cute, but it makes her look a lot older. Um, Heavenly's confessional look, no. No, 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 no. That blonde, no, 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 no. Contessa's confessional look, she's still wearing them cheap wigs. Um, who else is it? I think that's it. Um, so yeah, it's just like, okay. It's, it's, it's all around, child. It's all around, darling. What else is going on? Okay. Hmm. Uh, Heavenly Quad and Contessa had a scene. Quad looked cute in this scene. She had this little blonde, sharp cut. It was cute. That was cute now. Um, the Dijonet hair that you got in your confessionals, no God. Um, you know, the promo pics, that one, no God. But, um, yeah, the little short blonde thing that works for Quad is cute. Anyway, they met up. They started, you know, talking about penises and, you know, Quad wanted to get a man. And, you know, it was a cute little funny scene they had. It wasn't much to it. Um, let me see. So everybody's getting ready for, um, Dr. Jackie's, um, emergent tea event um you know they all sitting around talking and uh let me see no it's it's actually they show Mariah first like I said Mariah's upset with Jackie you know that she repeated it that she knew was a lie etc oh god Mariah find something to do I mean my lord it's like she's grasping at straws she making she taking any little thing as a storyline I mean, really. And it's like she, she's the head of this crew and then, then Miss Quad is the head of this crew. I don't think that Mariah and Quad are ever going to be friends again. Or ever going to talk again, really. You know, but I don't know. A mess. Uh, let me see. So we get to the tea event. Mariah arrived. Um, who arrived first? Maybe it was Heavenly arrived first. She had on blue, looked like a nice little church lady. Um, then Heavenly, then Mariah arrived. She had on the exact same outfit as Heavenly. Mariah said, I'm so glad that I can be a blueprint <laughs> for Heavenly's um, look tonight. Y'all know they, Sean ain't gonna never get along. Um, so that was funny. Let me see. Miss Quad, you know, all the girls get there. I don't know what the hell Contessa had on, but you know. We don't look to Contessa for, for fashion. We don't. Uh, let me see. What else happened? Hmm. Okay, so, you know, they get to the whole thing. The instructions are, you know, while they're sipping their tea, is, um, you know, each person go one at a time, and they pick, I believe, one. Um, she had a list of, um, things, you know, to talk about. Like, I felt disappointed when... I felt betrayed when, etc. Each ladies will pick out one thing and explain why they feels hurt by why they feel hurt by a person at the room, and you know just tell this story and hopefully heal. So who went first? Um, I think Mariah. I think Mariah went first. She says that she feels um, betrayed by a person here that repeated um, what someone else said that you knew that that was a lie. The lady, the mentor asked, um, well, how do you feel like you can heal from that? Sorry, y'all, my ear itching. I got my ears pierced maybe two, three weeks ago. So it's like going through the whole healing stage. It's getting on my nerves. But anyway, um, 
I got an extra. I already had two holes in each ear. I just got a third hole in each ear. So, yes. But um, anyway. She was like, well, how are you able to move past that situation? She, Mariah was just like, I just need people to acknowledge that it happened first. So I'm just like, oh, God, here we go. Here we go. Um, let me see. Toya went. Toya got emotional. Um, she says that uh, she's not going to tell the ladies about her miscarriage because, you know, they're in their own heads. They don't care right now. Um, and she just really don't know who's really her friend anymore. She's mad at Contessa because Contessa called her husband a big ass bitch. And like I said, I, I like Contessa, but I felt like Contessa was wrong for that. It just didn't need all that energy. Like, what was that for? It came out of nowhere. Um, you know, everybody's looking at Toya with a straight face. I was screaming because they panned that camera over to Contessa. Contessa was just looking at her like this the whole time she crying. I was like, I can't take it. Please, please go to somebody else. Um, but you know, also Toya's main. I feel like Toya's main emotions are coming from the fact that she had a miscarriage. Um, okay. Let me see. Uh, Simone went. She says that she also is disappointed and betrayed. Um, by you know, she confided in somebody here and they betrayed her. Talking about heavenly. The heavenly said something like, "You need to sweep um, the dust stuff around your own front door before you come and try to sweep mines off." She said something like that and said it was in the Bible and it wasn't. <laughs> Y'all know heavenly child. Um, so they asked Miss Court to go. Child, don't you know Miss Court pulled all the things? I am disappointed. I am upset. I was irritated. I was mad. Court pulled all of them, child. And Jackie had the nerve to say to her, um, do you think for time purposes that you could pick at least two? Quad cool, got offended. <laughs> cool, you could be taking up all these people's time. So you know Miss Quad the preacher, you know Miss Quad started to talk. And I feel just very much like that. I was very disappointed in you. And all this kind of stuff. And I was just like, oh Quad. It went on and on and on. I was like, Lord. I love Miss Quad. Miss Quad is so dramatic. I tell you. All the lady was just like, okay, quad, okay, quad, okay, quad. Um, let me see. So with that, um, Miss Quad, she decided to invite Simone on a dinner date uh, because she says that she misses Simone's friendship, and neither one of them can um, understand why they're no longer friends. So I can give you a few reasons, but whatever. Um, so Simone, she arrived. Um, quad was not there yet. So she sent Quad a text and said, um, well, I'm here, and, um, you know, do you want any drink requests? Do you want anything to drink? So time had went by, and before you know it, don't you know Miss Quad came in a whole hour afterwards? Didn't even bother to text Simone when Simone texted her. Now, Quad, that's disrespectful. And then when you got there, you're going to have the nerve to have an attitude. So first of all, you're late, then you have an attitude on top of that. Oh sis, no. That's not how this works. That's not how any of this shit works. You 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 can't do that, Quad. Quad came in, you know, she okay, she's very busy. She's very busy. Miss Quad came in twisting. I'm um, talking so I basically wanted to meet with you to talk to you about the things that transpired last year. And uh Simone was just like, Oh, okay, you just going straight into it. Quad was just like, Yeah, because I ain't got time, I gotta go to work in the morning. I scream. Quad is a mess. Um, you know, Quad, uh, she started to talk about the crab boil. And Simone was just like, well, Miss Quad, we talked about that last year. Quad was just like, so are you going to admit to anything? Are you going to stand up in my face and admit to anything that you've done? Are you going to do that for Miss Quad? Are you going to do that, honey? And, you know, Simone was just like, okay, first of all, you're not going to yell at me. You're not going to demand nothing at me, little girl. You're just not going to do it. Um, Simone ended up getting frustrated Ended up walking off Because Miss Quad was coming at her very Just aggressively And I don't really like to use that word But um, she, that's how she was coming at her And it was it was not warranted In, in that moment um, So for Simone's full of shit And it has her moments But it's just If you wanted to accomplish something Quad 
if you wanted to sit down and have a clear conversation with her to really get into her head to find out why she did what she did and vice versa that's not the way to do it sis it's not I don't know what you thought she was going to get out of that Simone walked off Simone pissed she's going to go back and tell Toya and Mariah everything that happened child and they just going to say child I told you child Miss Qua mm-hmm. and Qua going to do the same and go back and tell Heavenly and Contessa and you know Jackie going to be in the middle and there you go that's the show um, with that said I'm Mr. Chalaki Mr. Chalaki on Google Plus follow me at Excuse World on Instagram and Twitter at Excuse World 89 on Snapchat Chase King on Facebook Mr. Chalaki on Cash App and PayPal run me my money or run me my fade run me my money the way I get paid stay black stay tuned I'll see you guys later